When we talk about draconic astrology, what we have to bear in mind is that there are different kinds of zodiacs. A zodiac depends on the starting point that one uses. For instance, we have the sidereal a zodiac, the tropical zodiac, which is the one that we most more commonly use in the Western Hemisphere. And for instance, in this case, you can see how the tropical zodiac has zero degrees of Aries as its starting point. Okay, so here we have the ecliptic and the celestial equator, and in this intersection point, sorry, this intersection point, this is where the zodiac begins. And this usually happens. Whenever we have a zodiac, we have two planes that interject. So today we're going to talk about the zodiac of the nodes. And of course, we need to know what are the lunar nodes. We're going to be referring, the draconic zodiac is the zodiac of the lunar nodes. And this is important to clarify because all planets have nodes. But today we're going to be referring to the lunar nodes only. Okay, so what is the nodal axis? What are the lunar nodes? From an astro astronomical point of view, if we project the orbit of the moon into space, we get this, the projected orbit of the moon. And this is tilted towards the ecliptic. So they cross, the, the, there's an intersection in their paths. And when the moon is going from northern latitude, that is north of the ecliptic, that is northern celestial latitude, towards southern celestial latitude, south of the ecliptic, south of the path of the sun, that is the point of the south lunar node. And when the moon is going from south of the ecliptic to north of the ecliptic, this is the point of the north lunar node. So what happens here is that when the moon is at this point near the nodes, the moon has the same latitude as the sun. Okay, because we all know that, for instance, if the sun, Im let's imagine that the sun is here. Maybe the sun is here at this point, uh, here. And we can have the moon at the same degree of longitude, but in a different latitude. For instance, we could have the moon here, this point. So they would have the same degree of longitude along the zodiac, but their latitude is different. Now, when the moon is near the nodes, it means that it has the same latitude as the sun. And that is the reason that the eclipses take place near the nodes, because the sun and the moon have the same latitude, zero latitude, or very near zero latitude for the moon. Okay, so when we're talking about draconic, we need to remind ourselves that we're only referring to the nodes of the moon. We're not referring to the nodes of Venus, not referring to the nodes of Pluto, we're referring to the nodes of the moon. And therefore, this kind of zodiac is going to be about emotions, is going to be about, about unconscious motivations, it's going to be about everything that is related to the moon. Okay, and there are many ways of looking at the nodes. For instance, in traditional astrology, the North Lunar Node was it, it was said that it was of the nature of the benefics of Jupiter and Venus. That's what Bonatti says, and later on William Lilly says about the North Node. So it's masculine of the nature of Venus and Jupiter, and it makes things grow, it makes things expand. And Bonatti also refers to the South Node as of the nature of Saturn and Mars, and he says that it makes things decrease. So that's the traditional way of looking at the nodes. South node, things decrease, it's of a malefic nature. North node, things increase, it's of a benefic nature. But in the last century, with the advent of psychological astrology, there arose different ways of looking at the nodes. For instance, Ebertine, 
has a way of looking at the notes that is it refers to relationships okay and the interpretation that we're going to be looking at today is based on Dane Rudyard the French astrologer of the of last century and what he says is from a strict biological and functional point of view the north lunar node refers to the mouth of an animal okay so this is something that we incorporate into our lives and the south lunar node to the organs of evacuation something that we've already used and we are it's time to get rid of okay because we have already used that energy so in this point of view from this perspective the north node is refers to to those traits or behaviors that we need to incorporate into our lives in order to evolve and the south lunar nodes means to the kind of behaviors that we're already so familiar with that our we, we don't need them anymore so we need to release them or at least if we're not going to to stop behaving in that way we need to reinforce the traits described by the North Node in order to counterbalance the South Node. Okay, because the South Node is not bad. It can be productive, but it's productive in a way where we are not aware, our consciousness is not involved. Okay, so again, Dane Rudyard, the South Node shows where we are coming from. He refers to past lives but you don't need to believe in past past lives in order to do draconic astrology so he says shows where we're coming from the path of least resistance it describes qualities we're already familiar with and express in spite of ourselves it's like for instance a lemon tree is going to produce lemons but this is not a conscious decision it just does so And then, again, according to Rudyard, the North Node represents where we're going and it pinpoints the traits we strive to conquer in order to counterbalance the unconscious tendencies of the South Node. So, for instance, let's think about this. Let's imagine the South Node is in Libra and in the Eighth House. So, this would be a person who, is, who unconsciously is very nice to others is um, taking care of others is very good at relationships probably will give priority to what others want and in the eighth this could be a person who needs the resources of other people okay who feels comfortable using resources money whatever of other people maybe a spouse maybe a partner maybe a business partner and what that person needs to incorporate or strengthen in their life is the North Node in Aries in the second. So that would be taking action, being more self-centered, being more aggressive, being, uh, being more individualistic, if that word exists, but t paying attention to one's individual self instead of being uh, focused on others. And also, since it's in the second, that person is also going to need to make their own money. Okay, they're going to have to conquer this, this ability to make their own money. So that would be a way of interpreting the nodes. Okay. And in Dane Rudyard's view, the nodal axis becomes the soul's path because it's the what the person needs to achieve in life in order to evolve it has to do with evolution in order to grow 